Welcome to the Robcast. If you dig this, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash robshow. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash robshowtv. And keep up to date with all things Rob Show on social, The Rob Show, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now for your listening pleasure, today's Robcast. Welcome into your Wednesday edition of the Rob Show. Coming up on tonight's radio program, we bring the game back. We haven't played it in a while. Right or wrong with Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger is my 47-year-old neighbor. He operates on a different frequency. We operate on FM. He operates on AM. Yeah. Uh, Basically, your job will be to tell me if Cheeseburger gets the question correctly or not. In which state is New York City located? Uh... Isn't that mean? Again, a different frequency. Coming up in the 7 or the 8 o'clock hour of tonight's show, our second installment of Handicap Handies, Sex Tips from a Crippled Couple. But coming up in just a few minutes, a racist lawn ornament in Cape Coral leads to a home being egged. Details coming up. Cape Coral is in the news for all the wrong reasons. Someone destroyed a Cape Coral family's lawn ornament. It showed a black boy with a rope around his neck. Then this family's home was egged and that statue destroyed. The family claims that they didn't realize that the statue that they had on their front lawn of a black boy with a rope around his neck wasn't racist. I'll give you more details coming up. But first, Guns N' Roses. It's rare that this gets played for the cape. But the music for this story, surprisingly fitting for what happened in Cape Coral. It happened on Tuesday night. A Cape Coral family's home was egged and their racist lawn ornament smashed while protesters across Southwest Florida are protesting the death of George Floyd. It started with a photo on Twitter of a small black boy with a rope around his neck. It's a black lawn ornament that was placed on the front lawn of a home in Cape Coral. The person who posted that photo on Twitter wrote, I'm disgusted. Next thing we know, The statue is smashed, the home is egged, and the Cape Coral Police Department had to send officers out to investigate. And that means that the news goes out and investigates too. Here's NBC2 News. They spoke with the owners of the home, and the the homeowners explained to NBC2 News why they had a statue of a black boy with a rope around his neck. A black boy with a rope around his neck. When I asked the white husband and wife, both in their 70s, about the situation, they told me the, quote, black kid fishing statue is a family heirloom of more than 50 years. And the rope around the boy's neck, they say it was used to tie the statue to a post to keep it from falling over. Come on, man. You really, you can't find anywhere else on that statue to tie the rope around besides the kid's neck. What it looks like is a little black boy with a noose around his neck. And the family goes, oh, we didn't mean any harm by it. It's a family heirloom. Wow. What fun this family must be. I'd love to go over and see their lawn at Christmas time. Ah, just ignore the giant flaming crosses on our front yard. It's just a Christmas decoration. Oh, what, you got a problem with us flying the Nazi flag? Well, we're just history buffs. Oh, those KKK robes, that's not racist. We're just fans of fashion. What a bunch of jerk-offs. To many, it's a symbol of racial intolerance and, as the Washington Post says, a holdover from the days of slavery and Jim Crow. The family who owned the statue in Cape Coral say they did not mean any harm by having the statue in their yard. Of course they didn't. They didn't mean any harm by having a statue of a black boy with a rope around his neck. Yeah, sure thing. Don't worry about it. A bunch of jerk-offs. Now look, you shouldn't break anybody else's property, but am I sad to see that statue go? Absolutely not. There is a new study from the Annals of Internal Medicine that claim that couples should wear face masks while having sex. My question, you guys weren't doing that already? Yeah, I always wear a mask. Here's how I make love. I put the ball gag in, I insert the beads, then I put the get mask on. Yeah, good luck getting in my body, COVID-19. There's no way you can get in. Oh, maybe the ears. I gotta figure out something to put in those. But according to the Annals of Internal Medicine, They did a 
study on how likely it is for you to catch coronavirus from making love to your significant other. And the research recommends that wearing a mask for the riskiest sexual scenario could protect you from getting COVID. They claim that even if you're having sex with somebody that's not your significant other, if you're making love with somebody that you have not been quarantined with, you need to wear a mask. And if you're making love to somebody you've been quarantined with, you still got to wear the mask. Always cover your face. The study says besides keeping your mask on, you should avoid the following while having sex. Kissing. Any oral to... Well, I can't say the other part of that act. The old... Yeah. Can't do any of that. And anything else that involves semen or urine. They claim that you should shower before and after having sex. And then clean wherever you had sex with alcohol wipes or soap. According to this study done by the Annals of Internal Medicine, they say the safest approach to sexual activity, according to the researchers, researchers is not having any. Well, look at that. I am protecting myself from COVID-19 because I'm barely having any sex. And when I do have sex with my girlfriend, I am fully dressed and cannot be penetrated by the COVID-19 virus. Coming up in minutes, we'll take a trip to Haywood County, North Carolina, where an unidentified woman got into an argument with a fella. She then hijacks a security vehicle and ends up in a lake with that vehicle. Stolen security vehicle from Lake Junaluska leads to a sheriff's pursuit, ending with the stolen vehicle and a patrol car in the lake. More details coming up. Let's take a trip up to Haywood County, North Carolina, where an unidentified woman was caught trying to break into some vehicles. Security is called. When security shows up, they find the woman arguing with a man. The security guard gets out of his vehicle, goes to try and calm the situation down. At that point, the unidentified woman then jumps inside of the security vehicle and takes off. Due to some confrontation, the Lake Junaluska security vehicle was compromised and was taken from the scene. Chief Deputy Jeff Haynes says shortly before 10 a.m., Lake Security had received complaints of a suspicious person trying to gain entry into cars at the lake's nearby welcome center. Security responded, finding the suspect and a second person in an altercation. The sheriff's office says at that point, the suspect got into the lake's security vehicle and took off swiping a responding deputy's patrol car. According to the deputies that were on scene, yes, the driving was very erratic uh, by the suspect, uh, putting other people's lives in jeopardy. So the suspect takes off in the stolen security vehicle. The cops then pursue her, chasing her in the Haywood County Sheriff's Department cop cars. The woman driving erratically around Lake Junaluska, putting others at risk. So the cops decided, hey, you know what? We can't have this crazy bitch on the road. We're going to pull the old pit maneuver and send her into the lake. Jack Ewing witnessed part of the chase. One actually hit the other, heard the crash. Haynes says the deputy intentionally pushed the suspect into the water and away from an area frequented by pedestrians. His patrol car ending up in the water, too. The public safety was first and foremost uh, was the reason for the, uh, uh, for the termination of the pursuit. Now, I don't know whether or not they've fished both of the vehicles out of Lake Junaluska, but I can tell you this much. As of 6 p.m. this evening, when I printed the news story, there are no charges filed against this woman. So I, she was taken into custody after trying to run away on foot after they sent her vehicle into the lake, but they have not announced the charges against her. So I'll keep you posted on this very odd story out of North Carolina. We'll take a break, and when we come back... The second installment, Handicap Handies, Sex Tips from a Crippled Couple. Time for tonight's Handicap Handy, Sex Tips from a Crippled Couple. Shane Burkall, 27 years old, suffers from spinal muscular atrophy, a neuromuscular disease that causes his muscles to deteriorate over time. His beautiful wife, Hannah, she's 24, she is able body, and together they created the YouTube channel Squirmy and Grubs. This is where they take questions about what it's like being intimate when you're in an interabled relationship. Here's the question that was posed to them today. Amy asks, I imagine that you need to use a lot more verbal communication about what you each want and how to achieve it than a couple with two able bodies. Do you feel like your sex life has benefited from that? Do they feel like their sex life has benefited from open dialogue? I can tell you this much. My girlfriend and I don't have an open dialogue because if we did, she would know how much I enjoy watching gangbang videos and taking matters into my own hands. That's what I do. 
I don't make love to my... Man, this guy in a wheelchair is getting laid more than I do. He suffers from spinal muscular atrophy, and he gets laid more than I do. I'm able-bodied, and I got a body that nobody wants to do anything with. That sucks. Sometimes I almost go too far in the communicative <laughs> yeah. category. Um, and I'm not talking about, like, making noise, but... Oh, uh, yeah. God, Shane. <laughs> uh, uh, no, what I mean is... Look, before I continue this clip, I would pay massive amounts of dollars to see these two in a porno. I know that sounds weird, but I just want to see how it works because he's just like a little ball of flesh and she's a beautiful woman. And when I say like a lot of dollars, I'm talking in the tens. I'd be willing to pay nineteen ninety five to watch it. When I am, I'm, how do I phrase this? Pregnantly. When I'm on the giving end of oh. intimacy, yeah. <laughs> uh, I am very prone to be like, is this good? Is yeah. this fine? How's this? Is this all right? Yeah, repeatedly. And, and it's often like, shut up, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Again, that guy in a wheelchair has a hot wife and gets laid more than you and I probably. So there it is tonight's Handicap Handies Sex Tips from a Crippled Couple. Open dialogue makes the lovemaking that much more special. We'll take a break. When we come back, your weird wiener news and your douche of the day. Coming up in minutes, tonight's weirdo wiener news. And for tonight's Weird Wiener News, we travel out to San Antonio, Texas, where a mystery masturbator is on the loose. Cops have caught the mystery masturbator on camera. And now they need your help tracking down the mystery masturbator. Who is he and why is he mysteriously masturbating all over San Antonio, Texas? I will give you details coming up. Your Weirdo Wiener News, it is on the way. Time for tonight's Weirdo Wiener News. And for tonight's Weird Wiener News, we travel out to San Antonio, where the cops are on the lookout for a mystery masturbator. And I don't understand these stories at all. Why do guys want to do that out in public? There are two things that I never want to be seen doing. The first is uh, wiping after going number two. There is no possible way that you can angle your body as a man and make it look somewhat attractive when you wipe your butt. You just can't do it. Second thing I don't want to be caught doing, masturbating. This is weird. I don't need anybody asking questions like, why are you watching gangbang videos? Why are there so many dudes and only one lady? What are you really into there, Rob Show? And the answer is not guys. I'm into girls. I'm just into girls taking it from a lot of guys. There's a difference. But this guy, an unidentified pervert out in San Antonio, is on the run. A mystery masturbator. Happened around 2.30 a.m. last week. Uh, May 24th, around 2.30 in the morning, a woman, uh, she was asleep, but her security footage on her home captured a man in her driveway. It's 2.30 in the morning. There's no reason why that unidentified man should be in that woman's driveway. The man then leaves the home, walks around the neighborhood, goes through a couple of people's mailboxes before he goes back to the same woman's home a half hour later at 3 a.m. The man then walks directly to the exterior wall of the woman's home where a camera is mounted. After getting to the wall, the man pulls out his penis and at first appears to be urinating on the side of the house. However, police say the suspect is then seen playing with himself and as I'm going to quote the news here, air humping and of quote the area around him while his penis was still out. The man is then seen leaving the area and has not been seen since. The suspect is currently wanted for indecent exposure. He's 5'8", weighs about 150 pounds. They say he's possibly between the ages of 20 and 40. Anyone with information regarding this pervert should call the San Antonio Police Department. So there it is, tonight's weird winner news. An unidentified man pulled out his penis, played with it, then humped the air around him outside of an unidentified woman's home. Thanks for checking out the Robcast. If you dug this, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash robshow. Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash robshowtv. And fellas, feel free to send those D-pics on social, the Rob Show, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.